Now that we've explored various strategic approaches regarding customers, technologies, competition, and resources and capabilities, we can move on to the next pivotal step of our process. The goal of the test to choose one exercise is to analyze two alternative entrepreneurial strategies for your venture and propose a test that will help you choose between them. To complete the process, we'll follow the three steps that are listed here. First, we'll describe one entrepreneurial strategy and identify linkages between the choices associated with it. Then, we'll propose an alternative strategy with a different value creation and capture hypothesis and determine associated linkages. And finally, we'll conclude the exercise by evaluating how these strategies are different and by proposing an experiment that would allow us to choose between them. To illustrate how this process should be carried out, we'll take a look at the Copenhagen wheel. This product was developed by a small team working out of MIT's Sensible City Lab in 2013, and the team went on to found Super Pedestrian, a venture that develops technologies for microelectric vehicles that optimize for safety, reliability, and performance. And before we begin, let's take a look back at the venture's core idea, passion, and unfair advantages. The team's core idea was a smart electric bicycle system, and they were passionate about urban innovation in bike-centric cities like Copenhagen. Uh, we can also note that their unfair advantage was their experienced, multidisciplinary team and their group of mentors. And for a more detailed look at these aspects, feel free to take a look at our video on idea, passion, and unfair advantage. So now that we've provided some context for our example, we'll move forward to completing the exercise, and we'll start with our first canvas. The idea, passion, and unfair advantage were just noted, and they'll remain the same, so we can jump over to the strategy box and note that we'll be exploring an intellectual property strategy. So looking at customers, if this strategy is pursued, the technology could be licensed to wheel manufacturers and ultimately reach end consumers through the manufacturer's finished products. In this case, bicycle wheel manufacturers would be the target customer, uh, and the core technology would be a self-contained rear wheel containing a motor, battery, and sensor that would work together to amplify the rider's pedal power. Moving to competitive choice, the venture would choose to collaborate with a large pre-existing bike wheel manufacturer in the market, but it would maintain control over this proprietary technology. And for our last choice, resources and capabilities, we can note that the final strategic choice would make the venture the leading source of innovation in the e-bike industry. The founders would work to build a team with capabilities to churn out new innovations in e-bike technology, and lawyers would be a valuable asset for maintaining control over all of the new proprietary technology developed. Now, for value creation and capture hypotheses, we can note that under this strategy, the product creates value for the end consumer, so in turn, it'll create value for the bike wheel manufacturers who could benefit by offering the product with their name attached to it. And in our last box, we can note that the venture can capture value by developing a reputation for controlling its e-bike innovation. It can collect licensing revenues from its customers and it can leverage various patents for bargaining power in the industry. Now that we've outlined one potential strategy, we'll determine the associated linkages. The goal of this page is to figure out how each choice is connected and determine if these connections strengthen the strategy or expose some underlying weakness. So let's get started. The venture's competitive position will assist in creating value for target and consumers because collaborating with a well-known bike wheel manufacturer will give the technology fast exposure to a broad consumer market. By choosing to collaborate, the Copenhagen wheel will become available to all of the wheel manufacturer's customers pretty quickly, and that is a massive advantage. Moving to the right, we'll see that the venture's core technology facilitates value creation for the target customer because Wheel manufacturers with access to the patented technology will be able to leverage the feature and create more value for end consumers. And this will ultimately allow all parties involved to capture even more value. Moving to linkages between technology and resources and capabilities, we can note that the venture's core technology is supported by the resources and capabilities being built because the team has strong technical capabilities and will develop an effective legal team to ensure the continued development of valuable, well-controlled innovations. And lastly, the venture's resources and capabilities inform its choice of with whom and how to compete because the venture's technical skills and qualified team will make it a prime candidate for collaboration in the market. By completing the top section of this page, we've determined key linkages, so let's assess the strengths and weaknesses that they convey down below. 
The Venture's value creation and value capture hypotheses depend on the belief that bicycle wheel manufacturers will actually be willing to collaborate um, and pay for a license to this technology. And we're also relying on the fact that end consumers will even be willing to purchase a motorized e-bike. One major strength of this entrepreneurial strategy that was highlighted above was leveraging a partner's pre-existing customer population for mainstream market exposure. This strategy also offers the potential to become a leader in e-bike innovation through consistent idea turnout. So if executed correctly and successfully, this strategy would bring the Copenhagen wheel to market quickly and it would make Superpedestrian one of the leaders in the industry. But on the other hand, one weakness is the potential for replication and another would be the irreversibility associated with a licensing agreement. Replication is always a valid concern because a patent won't always be able to protect proprietary tech from replication. And irreversibility is also equally concerning because contractual obligations must be adhered to. So once we sign an agreement, we may not be able to pivot to another strategy. And with that, we've completed the linkages page of the section and we can move on to experimentation, implementation, and viability. To start, we'll consider what must be true for the selected strategy to work and how the founding team can determine if these factors are indeed true. In this case, Superpedestrian would have to gauge end consumer demand for the product and then determine the manufacturer's willingness to partner. To figure out if these factors are true, the team can explore any pre-existing e-bike industry reports and conduct interviews with potential customers to understand market demand. The following team can also begin looking for potential partners, but this should be low commitment exploration that prioritizes protecting the technology. We wouldn't want a major firm to see what we have to offer and then go on to replicate it themselves. Moving to implementation, we'll outline actionables for developing these experiments and validating our hypotheses. So to get started, the venture can begin establishing relationships with local biking communities because this would likely make our experimentation process easier in the future. And to receive even more feedback, the team can begin drafting the survey that would be taken by potential customers and prepare to send it out. If there are reliable late stage prototypes, the venture can also give a select group of individuals crude versions of the product and they can receive feedback on that. If this feedback that they receive is positive and there's good enthusiasm from potential customers, the hypotheses are likely true. And to complete the page, we'll gauge viability of the strategy by taking a broader look at everything that we've considered. I'd say that given the founder's passion and unfair advantage, the strategy is pretty viable. You know, the team's passionate about creating products with the power to revolutionize urban landscapes, and the team is pretty well equipped to execute this plan. It also looks like we've created a pretty clear framework for experimentation and implementation. So it shouldn't be too difficult for this venture to hit the ground running. So that'll conclude the analysis of our first potential strategy. And now it's time to consider an alternative approach. We'll move on to Canvas B. And on this page, let's consider an architectural strategy that the founding team may be able to implement. Immediately, we can know that the team's core idea, passion, and unfair advantage will remain free from specific strategies. So they will be the same as what we've noted under the IP strategy. It's our choices and hypotheses that will change. Under an architectural strategy, the value would be delivered to individual e-bike users by creating a platform dedicated to electric biking. This platform would be a new means of connecting various players in the industry. In this case, the technology would focus on connecting smart e-bike components to a smartphone or centralized device. And that would ultimately connect each individual to the larger internet community that exists. The founding team would be more focused on positioning the venture as an e-bike market hub and they would try to create seamless user interfaces. And to remain competitive, the venture would create, control, and leverage its new value chain in an effort to lead and shape the e-bike ecosystem and industry. Moving to the hypotheses associated, value would be created for bikers, bike manufacturers, e-biking enthusiasts, and more because they would be able to interact in a space dedicated to the industry. And that's something that's never existed previously. And in our final box, we can note that by controlling the supply chain, the venture could capture value at different points throughout the interactions. In the interest of time, I'll only be outlining the canvas for the second strategy. I encourage you to think through these pages yourself, but as we pass over the linkages, experimentation, implementation, and viability sections, feel free to pause and review what we've noted. So now, after completing steps one and two of our test two choose one process, 
We'll move on to step three, where we'll compare the two entrepreneurial strategies and propose a test that will help choose between them. Let's start with a comparison of the IP and architectural strategies. The crucial distinction between them is their focus. The IP strategy focuses on perfecting the electric bicycle technology, while the architectural strategy focuses more on building a larger smart bike platform. On one hand, pursuing an IP strategy facilitates market penetration, but this path also poses risks of technological imitation from large, pre-existing bike wheel manufacturers. On the other hand, an architectural strategy will let the venture position itself as an e-bike market hub, but going down this path will place less focus on the technology itself. And both strategies cannot be pursued at the same time because the venture has limited resources. Given available capital and capabilities, attempting to do both is not feasible. When comparing learning potential, if the venture pursues an IP strategy, the team will develop expertise of electric bicycle technology, but an architectural strategy will help them learn more about the entire e-bike industry and all of its relevant ecosystem players. So how can we choose between these alternatives? Well, We've identified experiments for both strategies, so the venture can carry out a combination of the two to inform its decision. Super Pedestrian can use market research and consumer feedback from potential beachheads as an initial gauge of the market's response to these alternatives. After learning from surveys and interviews, the team can begin developing early stage prototypes for one or both strategies to determine product feasibility. These prototypes can also be used to receive even more feedback from potential beachheads. And since experiments for both strategies are low commitment, there are no major costs to pivoting early on. But once prototype development begins, pivoting will probably come at some cost. And that brings us to the final page of this section in the workbook, where we'll choose one. So first, let's identify which strategy helps the entrepreneurs achieve their broader reasons for becoming an entrepreneur. This is also known as their passion. We'll also try to determine if one strategy leverages their unfair advantage better than the other. Based off of what we've considered, the team's passions and unfair advantages appear to be more in line with pursuing an IP strategy. The founding team's idea was rooted in urban innovation with a specific focus on the city of Copenhagen. Their goal was to make bicycle travel in bike-centric cities more efficient, and given the team's technical skills and focus, it seems like they're way better equipped to pursue mechanical product development. When considering which strategy is more straightforward to execute, I'd say that both pose their own technological development challenges, but creating a platform that will facilitate e-bike data sharing and widespread communications may offer more uncertainty for this particular group. So it may be more straightforward to pursue that IP strategy. So all things considered, it looks like an IP strategy would be the most viable for this particular team to pursue. And that concludes our extensive analysis of all of these alternatives. But looking at this final box, we must recognize that the creation and exploration of alternative strategies does not necessarily have to stop here. Now that we've decided between two approaches, we could continue iterating and developing on a third, a fourth, or even more. We would continue iterating and choosing between different strategies until we've developed two approaches that are equally viable. In this case, IP clearly outweighed architectural in a few places, but if we were to keep creating new approaches, we'd stop once we have two or more that are highly feasible and so difficult to choose from that they would require further experimentation and research. So that brings us to the end of the process, and this concludes the workbook. I really hope that this video makes you more comfortable with conducting this detailed and thorough analysis, and I wish you the best of luck with your process.